All right. The next radio we've got here, this is that water can't sometimes called a, a loaf of bread radio. Kind of reminds you of a loaf of bread. And um, I got it from somewhere. It's been sitting in the attic for oh, 25 years or so. Um, All right, let's see what we got to do. Wow. This looks like it has been worked on. Okay, we got one problem right here to start off with. The knob is rubbing on the cabinet. So that's got to be fixed for sure. Okay, let's get it out of there. It looks like it's been worked on, so I'm going to bet that this is in working order. This radio may be in working order. Um, there are two things that happened to these Atwater Kent's radios of this era. These transformers, open circuit windings, and the second thing are these resistors that are in series with the coil. They're a little resistor that's in series with each coil. They're about a, a 50 ohm or so resistor. A little wire wound thing. And it's used to kill the cue of the coil. And that makes it where it has no tendency to be unstable. And those things have a tendency to um, to go bad. The wire, real fine wire they wind them with uh, breaks. So uh, those are the, the things that mostly go wrong. Other than that, the things are pretty uh, it's mostly uh, nothing but... Uh... Okay, that opens up that. That's been freshly painted. That's been painted. So it's possible that this thing has um, been completely worked on. Ooh. Oh, we didn't have to take that. The set screw's on the outside. I thought the set screw was inside. Some of them have a... <laughs> okay. Well, it doesn't matter. We, we just look at it. All right. Well, I'm going to measure the uh, grid leak while we've got it. That's another thing that does go bad on these, is these grid leaks. Okay, this one is bad. This is the Atwater Kent grid leak. What it is, is a small glass tube. It's got a very small uh, inner diameter, and um, it's got carbon inside of it. But that always breaks contact. This one here reads infinity. And this is very common to go bad in these Atwater Kents. Very common. I don't know. Okay, I got another one right here. This one. And that one's reading 20 megs, which is high. It would work, but it, it would give distortion. Let me see what else. I got more. Okay, I got another one here. Let's see what this one reads. Infinity. Okay. This these are bad. Alright. Let's see how, how many more do I have? I got three more of them in here. Most of them are going to be bad, though. I mean, they, they just... That's bad. Okay. Uh, there, there's going to be more of them here. There might be a good one. We'll see. i got probably another two or three of them in here. That looks like one. Ah. Okay, let's see what we got here. That's, way, that's a 20 meg ohms again. 20 megs is too much. Ha! Ah, that's about 6 or 7 megs. That'll work. Okay. 
okay? Then all these others, you know, these are, you know, they're no good. Uh, we'll, we can we can fix them by putting a uh, quarter watt resistor inside of them. But we got an original to go in there, so that'll work. Okay, now. Okay, this is the power supply wire. If this was a tested radio, I wonder why this wire is not stripped. I would think that had been stripped and connected to a power supply. So it may be that uh, this thing has is, is, is got a bunch more stuff wrong. Transformers. That would suck. But the transformer has been painted and that usually indicates somebody pulled it out and replaced it. Okay, the two big wires are the filament. Now this wire is very brittle, so I'm going to sit there. Okay, what they've got is they've got a rubber coating on the wire, and then they have a, um, a woven cotton outer jacket. Okay, the rubber inside is absolutely brittle and just crumbles when I flex it. So what I have to do is very carefully flex it to crumble it and let the outer jacket just hold it together. And the thing that makes that a problem is that the outer jacket is made out of cotton that is rotten. Rotten cotton. So I can't bend it too much or it'll rip. But usually we can flex it enough to where it's going to be okay. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more out. Idea of what all these wires are for. You, this this radio only requires four wires. So why it's got six, I don't know. It, it probably has got a C minus, and it may have two low B pluses. It'll have a high B plus, a detector B plus, and a low B plus for the amplifiers. Um, the good thing is this radio is it's a model um, thirty five. And it'll be in the um, in the riders. We'll have a, a, the riders, and it'll tell what these wires are for. Now, what I'm going to do when I'm finished working on the radio, I'm going to get urethane uh, lacquer, and I'm going to spray these wires with that urethane. Just saturate them with that urethane. This will lock the cotton fibers together and it'll make it to where they won't rip and break. To make these tin better I'm going to use flux. This is rosin flux. Some this old guy that I know gave me, he had some pine rosin and he made up this flux and he gave me some of it. This old guy that I know.
This is real, honest to God rosin. It's it's not the new modern uh, chemical type flux, which is much better. <laughs> even though, even though um, the modern stuff is better, I like the smell of the old rosin. It smells like pine trees. Now this is the 71A from the other day that um, doesn't have the retaining pin. See these sockets here are the ones that grab the sides of the pin so you don't need the retaining pin. So we can use the 71A that um, has no retaining pin in this radio. Okay. O1As all have retaining pins. There, there, there were never O1As made that did not have a retaining pin. Now this one originally used a 200A in here for the detector, but um, it, it's not necessary. An O1A works just fine. lot of tubes. These tubes are going for on the order of um, $20 each now on eBay. Occasionally you can find some cheaper. The latest batch that I bought were $15 each. Um, I remember back uh, when I first was in, in the radio, uh, bit, getting into the radios back in the uh, early 90s, uh, <clears throat> I, I was getting these O1As for four and five dollars a piece back then. Okay, we have to have a speaker. You get the speaker. All right, we're just going to use our, our um, radio speaker here. Now there's a hole in the back where you go, and down inside here there are two push terminals. When you push down on them, the hole opens up and you slip these pins into it. Let loose and it clamps it. They're very easy to use, but they're uh, detrimental in that if you yank the cord, they don't let loose. You'll rip, rip the wires. That wire is real fine um, spiral wound wire, flexible spiral wound wire. And you yank it, it, it it'll rip that wire rather than pull out of those connections. Uh, the, the ones that just shove in, when you pull on it, they'll, they'll pop out without hurting the wire. But these, eh, they're in there for good. All right, the antenna got the same kind of thing, so we're going to put a a little piece of wire in there so we can clip our antenna wire onto it. All right, pull the tube out. Okay. You can see down in there, this one here is the ground, and this one on the end over here is the antenna. Okay. Get our antenna wire here go through the hole. Well, clip it. All right. That will do. Tube.
Okay. We'll wash this up and clean it good. Right? Power spy. Okay, big red is a plus. Okay, the green is going to be C minus. All right, we got three more that I don't know. One of them is going to be the high B plus, one of them is going to be the low B plus, and the other is going to be the detector or another C minus. Let me get the um, get the uh, writer manual. Okay, that water can't. Okay. Let's see. Fifty five. If all right, here we go. <clears throat> hey, page is loose. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we've got a yellow. All right, that's the yellow. That's 22 and a half. All right. And, okay, red. Okay, green, yellow, we got. Okay, I'm going to call this white. That's the high B plus. white. This one looks brown. I don't know. We'll see. See what happens. I absolutely despise incompetence. And there's nothing that makes me matter than my own incompetence. And when I put these damn jacks in here. I did not tighten the nuts on the back of them tight. And now they're all coming loose. If I can't get it to seize. That's it. That's it. Total damn incompetence. Total damn incompetence. Get that box open. Damn it! Get that box open! Work so hard on stuff and do a half butt job. Stuff in there. Okay. Damn, that makes me mad. They're, they're all just finger tight. I forgot to tighten the damn nuts on it, you know. loose too. That's good. Okay, here's a way to do it. When the screw won't start, you get the right size tap. 
Okay, tap. Go right in there, man. That all right, damn it. wire goes here. Let, let me use some real heat. That'll tin it. If soldering iron doesn't really get hot enough to um, tin these um, wires, you have to break that oxide. It takes uh, oh, 12 to 1500 degrees. And only a soldering gun can do that. Boy, that thing's, see it's tinned perfectly. See a soldering iron is, I've got it set to 700 degrees for circuit board repair. So it isn't hot enough to break the oxide. The, the oxide um, breaks up down at um, around 1100 to 1200 degrees. So a regular old soldering iron, you can't, can't break through it. You have to have a flux that's extremely powerful. Uh, 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 or heat. See this tip here this is getting up to a thousand degrees. It's, it's dull red and that uh, breaks the oxide. But boy, once you hit a thousand degrees, it, it, all that old black oxide just melts away. But you got to have that thousand degree temperature. Now we can tighten the damn things without the, the whole thing coming loose. Okay, there we go. Ah. Okay, the antenna, and we'll hook to the indoor antenna. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, oh my goodness. This one here. I don't know if you're worried. 
a very fine line. And it depends on culture, too. I mean, there are some people... It depends on context and culture. There are some... They mean that... That thing picks up a bunch of stations. Okay? It's all working beautifully without doing any uh, major work to it. All we had to do was um, replace the uh, grid leak and um, connect her up. Okay, the next thing to do is to clean the whole box. Let's see what happens if I use... This is original finish. I thought it had been painted, but it's original. This is a, a highly polar material, so it doesn't affect the uh, paint. The paint is non-polar, so uh, something like acetone or something would take it right off, or lacquer thinner would take it off. But I mean, this stuff is polar, so it doesn't affect the, um, the paint that's on there. We can, we can spray it on there without having any fear of, of screwing the paint up. I love doing that. I just love for it to go slamming down like that with the O1A tubes in there. Oh, it just makes me feel so good. Oh my gosh, am I, I feel so good slamming it down like that with the O1A tubes in there. Oh, that makes me feel so good. Yeah, you just believe I feel good. You just go ahead and believe it. You can't imagine how peeved I am right now. Incompetence, putting that thing, balancing it up there on there. What kind of an idiot am I? Most of this is, this is just a, a bunch of dust from being in the attic for um, 25 to 30 years. I mean, there is some dirt. I mean, that, that's, it's black. It's got... It's got some grimy old dirt on there, but uh, most of it is uh, just dust from the attic. Okay. All right, that gets most of it off. Okay. That's going to do it. Okay, now we'll take that out in the uh, shop and we're going to stain this, then we're going to lacquer the uh, whole thing. And it's going to make it beautiful. Right, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to freshen the color up by using dark walnut stain. We're not going to sand it or do anything else like that. Um, I do want to polish these brass buttons though using steel wool. Ooh, those look cute. Okay. Okay, we just take a piece of uh, felt, get some stain, and we are just going to completely rub fresh stain. Now what this is doing is it's just taking the crazing that's on this paint and filling it in with color. 
we're not putting the stain on heavily. We want it very thin, just enough to color the crazy. We don't want it to be a thick goo on there. You can see how it, it takes the, the, the white part that's crazed and it just fills it in, turning it all to that nice shade of Atwater Kent Brown. These are not particularly valuable radios, but they are a, uh, a necessary part of any serious collection. You should have one of these in it. There are some, some radios that just uh, are such a part of history that um, any serious radio collection should have one. And this is one of them right here. Even though it's a $100 radio, it uh, it definitely is one that any serious collection should have in it. Of course, if you collect that water can't, it's an absolutely essential part of the collection. I, I don't collect that water can't. I have, oh, oh, I guess maybe three, three at water can'ts. I have the, uh, the breadboard, of course. The breadboard is another essential part of any serious collection, that Order Kent breadboard, you want to have one of those. But a lot of people don't have them because it represents a very substantial investment. I mean, you're not going to find one for under $500. If you do, you're really lucky. Whereas these you can find for $50 to $75 on eBay quite regularly. No tubes, of course, but uh, they're, they, they come up quite a bit. Okay, now that gets it completely, the color is completely um, taken care of. All right, now I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to wipe the extra stain off of it. We don't want it to, to have a goo on the surface. It's just to color the, the, the crazy. So we just take it and wipe that stain down. And um, leave it just Just the color. Okay, now I'm going to place this in the sun and let it dry for a few hours. We're in the middle of Houston summer. We're in mid-June right now in Houston. Gets to 97. It's supposed to be 97 today Fahrenheit. Very, 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 very hot. Very hot. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is completely dry. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to spray it with lacquer, plain old um, hardware store lacquer. All right. That looks good. Now I'm going to protect the knobs. All right. Okay. 
That looks good. Now, we're going to take this wire and we're going to coat the wires with this. This will, um, this will reinforce the uh, cotton. By saturating it with this, this lacquer, it'll harden and, and it'll glue the fibers of the uh, cloth together and make it to where it won't, um, won't crack. All right, that looks beautiful. Okay, we'll just let that go ahead and dry overnight, and it'll be ready to go back on the shelf for another 20, 30 years. All right, this is dried off. It's beautiful. All right, we can get that off of there. All right, look at that radio. Woo! That is just gorgeous. Okay, that is absolutely gorgeous. All right, well that was not particularly difficult. For once, an easy, an easy radio. All right, that's it.